We go now to Vienna, where we're joined by a 23-year-old Syrian refugee named Zahir Majoub. Uh, with him is Eric uh, Lydell, a volunteer with the community-run relief group Train of Hope, which is providing assistance to the migrants passing through the central train station in Vienna, Austria. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, Eric, could you start you. Uh, telling you. us uh, what your uh, what the Train of Hope is and what you've been seeing uh, in your efforts to help the uh, the refugees? Um, sure. The Austrians they don't take to the streets in protest very often, but they they're showing enormous compassion with their help during this crisis. Train of Hope isn't run by the Red Cross or Car Caritas; it's self-organized. And well over a thousand volunteers have helped out over the past week at the central train station here in Vienna. It's a very di diverse group of individuals who want to make a difference together. And um, I'd say Train of Hope is resonating off of Occupy in many ways and is taking full advantage of the capacity for social change through social media like Twitter and Facebook. We're even using an Indiegogo campaign to fund transportation as well. And that's a help Syrian refugees get to Germany. Uh, and essential to our team are translators of Arabic, Urdu, Farsi, and other languages. We have doctors and lawyers in our staff who volunteer. And I've even met volunteers who have only been in Austria for less than a year um, who are able to help uh, translate and, and help us with the assistance. The train station um, where we meet them, for many, this is the first stop in Austria um, and uh, after getting out of Hungary. And most of them are exhausted and confused. A lot of them don't even realize that they're not in Germany yet. Uh, many want to travel on to Germany immediately, but uh, those who do want to get off can do so at our center. The trains are often filled to the brim, and many of them have not eaten for days. Many must wait overnight some for longer at the train station for further travel. And uh, many sleep in the west train station in Vienna, but others travel on to Munich or wherever the train can take them in Germany. Most describe their uh, experience in Hungary as, as hell, hell on earth. Zahir Masjub, can you describe your journey, where you left and how you made it to Vienna, Austria? Yes, I started uh, first of all from Turkey. Uh, we take a boat uh, from Turkey, from Izmir, to uh, to Greece, to Greece Island. Uh, we go to the beach at about 1 a.m. and uh, we uh, got in the boat, and it's about uh, 43 people in it, and it's uh, long uh, seven and a half meters. Uh, we went. Uh, we went uh, for about. Uh, we kept sailing for about two uh, hours, and uh, then uh, the the boat started uh, to leak. Started to leak after uh, two hours, and uh, I decided uh, it was full of water. I decided to uh, throw myself in the water, me and the other person, because maybe. We are the only people that we can swim. Uh, we throw ourselves uh, in the water, and uh, we uh, the the ship or the boat keep uh, sa keep sailing, uh, and it's far from us for about uh, one kilometer. Uh, then we, uh, they about they almost reach the the island. I don't know what's name. It's small island. And uh, the police uh, guard coast uh, uh, hear them. They're screaming. They're uh, lighting. Uh, they whistle, and uh, came and rescued us. And they told them, uh, the police, that uh, the two other person throw themselves in the water, and uh, the police uh, kept searching us for about half an hour uh, until I. Uh, took out my phone until I took out my phone and uh, we, uh, op turn on the fl the flash light and uh, waving with with it uh, to police Greece until 
uh, they immediately see me, uh, they saw me, and uh, they uh, immediately came and rescued me uh, with the other person I have. Yes, and uh, took us to uh, this small island and arrested us for about 12 hours uh, until a ship, a big ship, uh, came and moved us to uh, to, to Samos Island. And from Samos Island, uh, we took a plane to Athens. Uh, next day, we uh, we went to uh, we went to a bus station. We go by a bus to uh, to the Macedonian border, Macedonian uh, Greece border. Uh, we let about for we keep uh, walking to get the border after we uh, the bus sent us to there. Uh, we keep working uh, for about uh, three hours. Uh, then uh, we uh, the, we cross the border. We cross the border and then we took a train and cross Macedonian uh, cross Macedonia to uh, reach the the border of Serbia. After that, we wait about for six hours to get into the Serbia, to, to Serbia. Uh, then uh, after they, uh, they gave us, uh, the UN was there, uh, they gave us uh, water and food uh, and uh, medical care to some uh, injured or some patient. Uh, uh, we we want uh, we uh, cross the border and uh, go to bus station and uh, take uh, we took uh, a bus to Belgrade uh, the capital of Serbia uh, then we took another bus to uh, to Kinjazi which is uh, on the border of uh, Hungary uh, Serbia uh, uh, border uh, then uh, we go inside uh, uh, Serbia to cross. We we bribe the police there to uh, reach us to take uh, to could us uh, uh, enter enter the border. We obligate of this. We bribe them, and uh, then we walked for about six hours to reach uh, the razor wire uh, fence, and uh, we. Uh, we we go we go under them. We will go under the the razor wire uh, fence, uh, and the planes uh, the planes uh, always uh, go and see if there is uh, refugees to catch them, to uh, arrest them, or to obligate them to uh, have a fingerprint in Hungary. Uh, but uh, the plane uh, couldn't see us. Uh, so we cross the border and uh, go uh, to uh, uh, somebody who has no uh, taxi driver. We went there and we took a taxi and uh, we paid for him uh, about 300 for each person to to reach uh, to go to uh, to reach us to Budapest. Uh, after that, uh, after we reach uh, Budapest, we stayed there. Uh, for about three days, uh, then uh, after we uh, know uh, that there is a, a taxi driver could reach us to uh, Vienna, we talked to him and uh, we agreed that uh, he he will uh, take us to Vienna. But uh, there is uh, there was a lot of police and uh, he let us on the border of uh, uh, Austria. Uh, Hungary, and we keep swimming to reach. Uh, we keep uh, sorry. We keep walking uh, to uh, to reach uh, the first uh, village in Austria. We keep about, uh, walking for about uh, six hours until uh, we find this village. And somebody uh, told us that we have to go to station, to sta train station, to uh, to take a, a train and uh, to reach uh, Vienna. Then. Uh, we uh, decided to walk there, and uh, we reached the station. Uh, then we uh, took uh, we took a, a train and uh, go. Uh, we, uh, we went to Vienna, and that's what happened until now.
Well, they, it's I a wanted thick, to, uh, let me ask you if I from, can from Syria. Uh, yes. yes, let me ask yes. you if I can. This is a, that's a harrowing journey that you've been through. Uh, now, could you tell us, and so for our viewers and listeners to know why you felt you had to take that journey, or what uh, made you decide that you had no other choice? Uh, I I don't have any other choices because there is uh, in Syria. Uh, no safer place to go in, and uh, maybe it's more dangerous uh, than uh, this journey, even. That's why I left Syria. And you have family that remains in Syria? Yes, I left my family there. They can't uh, go, uh, they can't went, because um, we don't have any other choices. I, uh, I left Syria because uh, I don't want to be a part of what's happening in Syria, uh, just a personal uh, uh, problems that I have in Syria. Uh, that's why I left Syria. I, I can't uh, tell, tell you now uh, 